For some political analysis, including more from our latest CBS News poll, we're joined now by Cook Political Report Editor-in-Chief Amy Walter, making her Face the Nation debut, some for political reporter Kadia Goba, CBS News Senior White House Correspondent Weisha Zhang, and our Executive Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto, is back with us as well. Anthony shared the top-line numbers a little earlier, Weisha, suggesting that we are back to a tie and that there's certainly some wind at the back of the Vice President. How is the Harris campaign planning to capitalize on this newfound enthusiasm. Well, this week, she's going to be getting a lot of miles at crisscrossing the country, going right to battleground states with her running mate. Of course, we don't know exactly who that is yet, but whoever it is going to be will be at her side. And they really want to use this week to, as you mentioned, drum up even more energy, even more enthusiasm, because they know it's a fleeting moment. I mean, we were in a fundraiser with the vice president, and she was very direct and said, look, we are the underdogs, despite Despite what the polls say, despite what we're seeing at rallies, we still have a lot of work to do. So, you know, they're trying to use what they can and use this big announcement uh, to really set that up. And, and Amy, you wrote in a recent piece that despite this shift in polling and the enthusiasm for the vice president, the fundamentals of the race are still leaning in Trump's direction. Yeah. Remind the viewer why. Yeah. And Anthony also highlighted this, yeah. too. She is new. And yet she's not new. <laughs> um, she's new to a lot of voters. She's not defined very well in the minds of a lot of voters. But she is the incumbent. And the incumbent party right now has a lot of baggage, notably the frustration about the state of the economy, what we saw in the CBS poll, what we're seeing in um, other polling, like the Wall Street Journal poll, where Donald Trump still has a sizable lead on who do you think would do a better job on the economy, who would do a better job on handling the border. On the question of who has better temperament to be president, Harris has a significant advantage there. Yeah. And this was the case that the Biden campaign had been making for months and months and months. Right? If we can make this election a referendum on Trump, rather than about a referendum on the state, the current state of the economy, then we have a real opportunity to win here. What Harris has been able to do is not just get the energy up among the base, but the focus is now back onto Donald Trump. And <laughs> thanks to this interview here, the reminder that when the focus does go back onto Donald Trump, it doesn't always end well for the campaign and, and the I, campaign message. I thought it was telling, the one thing I heard Senator Cotton saying is, you know, everyone else in recent years has had to go through years of this or months of this, town hall meetings and interviews and, you know, big stories written about, and she's doing this in 90 days, in essence, trying to set the table for, once again, it was unfair for us. I and mean, that's mm. that's kind of what I'm hearing. I don't know if you're hearing that at all, could you hear from Republicans? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. It's coming out of the Trump campaign saying that she, you know, was handed the election. And I think it's just part of this setup to probably say the election wasn't fair right. and for, and Donald Trump doesn't win. Um, we've been seeing this and also just how they're categorizing everything. But there is a race to kind of define her at this point. And, and the race is between the Harris campaign and the Trump campaign, right? Trump is on the... The, the stump post talking about, you know, questioning her identity, her, her racial identity. But also, the Harris people need to, you know, push forward with this. This little bump that we see is coming from her base right. or young voters that she's been able to convince or, you know, rally. She needs to... Independent voters are the people who are going to decide this race, and she needs to, you know... I don't know if the prosecutor's move is what they want to hear. It's been the subject of early advertising, yeah. reminding people that she was an attorney and general. Watch her advertising and the, you know, the, the what the candidates say, what the candidates say is really important. But what their ads are saying, what they is telling you really what they want the campaign to be about. Right. And Harris is not just leaning to the prosecutor, but about the economy. Um, she's talking a great deal about that. So they understand that if Trump has a double-digit lead on who's doing a better job on the economy, that's going to be really tough for them to overcome. Now, we are sitting here with bated breath, waiting to figure out who on earth she's going to pick to be her running mate. The poll has some sense of what Democrats broadly are looking for, right? Yes, it's a lot of things. Um, because, you know, people have their wants, and then you kind of turn them into strategists a little bit. So one of the things we asked is, you know, should it 
be somebody from a battleground state. And there's a high percentage who say, yeah, it should be. And there's also a split between those who want to see a moderate and those who want to see a liberal. In the abstract, that's the kind of thing that happens. But it also goes back to this point about what people don't know about Harris. Obviously, this is a first big decision that people will see her make. And there's still that one in five people when we ask, do you feel you know enough about her yet? Or do you feel like you still can know more. This is one of those telling moments where it's going to be, okay, this is part of that knowing more is this decision. So, Weijia, how are they approaching this decision? Well, this is a very short time frame for the vice president. What has been communicated very clearly is that we should actually not expect a decision by the end of the weekend, because she's been on the road. She's been very busy with small windows to really focus on this monumental decision. And so, you know, we know that she is meeting in person with at least three Democratic governors at her residence here in Washington today. We also know that she's having interviews in person and virtually with people who are not in the media, who are not confirmed as big, uh, you know, headliners, because she is taking this extremely seriously. So, underscore, so what you're saying is there are names that have not been mentioned in the press who are being interviewed. Mentioned in the context of going to the Naval Observatory today and sitting down with her face to face. Um, because, you know, just, it's easy to assume, well, that must mean they're on the shortest of the short list, but that's not the case. Right. So, you know, she doesn't have a lot of time. Aides have been really frustrated. They wish that they wish they had much more time, but this is the way this has all played out. So one thing I've observed from the vice president is what really matters to her is her rapport with people, mm -hmm. is chemistry. So it might just come down to that. But at the end of the day, we all know it's who's going to help her win and who's going to bring to the ticket what Joe Biden is leaving behind. So that's a... a and yet historically, ultimately... <laughs> Do they matter? Do they not matter? It, it usually is not as significant. We we love it because we love politics, and this is part of our day-to-day -day life. I don't think for voters, they're not viewing who they're voting for president through the lens of the vice president. But what it does do, especially for people who don't know much about Kamala Harris, it's her first major decision that she's making as an executive. So tells you about her, not just her thought process, but the kind of person she wants to lead with. And for somebody who's not very well defined, to have somebody, whoever she picks, the definition of that person is also going to help define her. So right now you see the Trump campaign leaning into she's liberal, she's way too liberal, picking somebody who's more moderate or centrist. The, the goal then, of course, would be to say, oh, well, sh there's some guardrails right. around that. And that was a lot of the discussion we were all having before Trump made his pick, right? Is he going to pick somebody who's going to put the guardrails around Trump for voters who say, I don't know, much, Trump's personality, his style's a little much for me. Instead, Trump leaned, r I mean, he went way into somebody who had those same style, that same personality, that MAGA uh, sort of thing. Yeah, to your point, he said that in the interview at NABJ the other day. Let's he, pot, I have that footage sure. that I want to show people. Let's play what he had to say about J.D. Vance. Historically, the vice president, in terms of the election, does not have any impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, virtually no impact. You have two or three days where there's a lot of commotion as to who, like you're having it on the Democrat side, who it's going to be. And then that dies down, and it's all about the presidential pick. Uh, virtually never has it mattered. Not exactly singing Vance's <laughs> praises there. No, it wasn't. Um, and, you know, leading up to the, the pick, uh, before he was announced, Republicans were kind of split on this. I had heard a lot of them saying, well, J.D. Vance, as long as it's not J.D. Vance, because he brings nothing to the ticket. On the other side, people said, well, they like his background. They like he was this guy, came from nothing. Now he's a senator. But also, I mean, either way, for a presidential nominee to say that about his running mate is pretty detrimental, whether it's—he might very well be, you know, accurate, yeah. but it's kind of, like— interesting to say that. Well, especially because all you have to look at is what we've been talking about with regard to the Republican ticket uh, since Vance was named, yeah. which is his comments yeah. from a few years ago about single cat ladies, which is how weird he is. So it's taking away from Trump, and that is yeah. an impact in and of itself. You were one of the three that questioned him at Tell this us. National Association of Black Journalists event. He questioned whether or not the vice president uh, is black. That was obviously, the biggest attention was devoted to that. 
Who do you think he's trying to reach by saying that? I don't think he that was a plan at all. I honestly question whether or not that is a talking point that's going forward, because when I talk to Republicans, they say that they don't want to step into this conversation about race at all. I think that was it could have been him just going off the cuff there. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's funny because when I interviewed him, I didn't expect that reaction from him. When I interviewed him in June, he had a lot of different things to say. And I was welcomed this opportunity because I thought, hey, I'll get him on some questions he didn't talk, answer back then. Did not anticipate him going off the rails like that. It was a fantastic read, all about his relationship with guys like Mike Tyson and Don King yeah. and how his relationship with African Americans is rooted in that. Yeah. Um, the, the controversy about whether he should have been there or not, where do you stand on whether or not he should be questioned in that kind of setting? I mean, he's a Republican nominee uh, for years, uh, the National Association of Black Journalists have encouraged presidential candidates to come there. Haven't had a Republican since George W. Bush. So no, that was a great opportunity to question him. We, we got to leave it there, unfortunately. Uh, but Kadia, Ouija, Amy, Anthony, we sit with bated breath on the running mate decision. <laughs> we will see where this poll takes us next. Thank you all for being here.